Hi, my name is Michael Bolden. I'm the founder of the Tenth Amendment Center, which you can find online at tenthamendmentcenter.com. I'm speaking with you from my home here in downtown Los Angeles, and this is the first of what I hope will be many, many regular discussions on the big issues of the day. I'll be coming across these issues not only through your website comments and feedback at tenthamendmentcenter.com, but also by looking at the public at large and the mainstream media. What I wanted to talk with you about this week was Dick Cheney, New Hampshire, and gay marriage. And this past week, uh, Cheney came out with a big pronouncement saying that he believes that gay people have the right to be married. But that laws dealing with marriage should not be on a federal level, but instead on a state-by-state -state level. New Hampshire almost concurrently put this principle into practice this past week. Uh, the legislature passed a bill legalizing gay marriage. The governor signed it, and now gay marriage is law in the state of New Hampshire. I believe they're now the sixth state to legalize gay marriage. If we really want to understand the role of the federal government in the marriage issue, and in fact in anything, all we have to do is look to its founding document, which is the Constitution. And the Constitution, especially when uh, considering the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, makes it quite clear that it was the people who created the federal government to be their agent for certain enumerated purposes only. And what that means, in short, is that there's a certain number of powers, there's really actually about 30 powers listed in the Constitution. And the federal government has to look to those enumerated or listed powers to find authorization for them to do something. Now they're not limited to only the exact words of the Constitution. There are implied powers. And in Article 1, Section 8, for example, where a big number of the powers are just put all together, there's 18, 18 powers that were delegated to Congress, the 18th of which says they can do that which is necessary and proper to carrying out the previous 17, and that which is necessary and proper to carrying out all the other powers throughout the Constitution. So really just to keep it short, or to make it as simple as possible, for the federal government to do something, it first has to find direct authorization, something specifically listed. And if not, the burden of proof is on the federal government to prove that what they're doing is necessary and proper, directly applicable to one of those enumerated powers. And on top of it, the implied power has to be lesser than the main power. Um, for example, uh, post roads uh, is in Article 1 and Section 8. Uh, Congress has the power to establish post roads and post offices. But there's nothing in there that says that they can hire the labor to build those roads and post offices. There's nothing in there that specifically says you can buy land for post roads and post offices. So these are things that are directly needed towards doing the enumerated power. Without doing, without having that authorization, those implied powers, the Congress would never be able to carry out the main power, which is the bottom line, building the roads and building the post offices. So with this basic understanding, we can actually apply this to virtually any issue, whether it's gay marriage, medical marijuana, gun rights, or anything. And on the issue of marriage, for example, I think it's pretty clear that there's absolutely nothing listed in there that specifically authorizes the federal government to be involved in the issue of marriage. The word marriage doesn't exist in the Constitution. So then the burden of proof would be on the federal government to show that they have an implied authorization to deal with marriage in regards to one of the other powers, to regulating commerce, to uh, building post roads, to admitting new states to the Union. And I think it would be nearly absurd to think that dealing with the issue of marriage, issuing marriage licenses, or saying who can and cannot get married is anywhere authorized to the federal government. And so uh, with that in mind, and it's hard to believe, but that would make, leave me in the position of having to agree with Dick Cheney on this particular issue, that this, if there's going to be laws at all, that the only place for them to be is uh, on a state or a local level for that matter. Now one other thing I wanted to touch on in regards to this is that a lot of people are referring to Cheney's position as a state's rights position. And I think it's important to, to discuss this for a little bit because the term or the phrase state's rights brings up a lot of passion in people, especially people who look at it 
as a way for people to get away with being racist. Whether people are or not, there's an automatic instinctual reaction, a gut response by a lot of people. And when you use a term like that that brings up these types of feelings, you build a barrier and it becomes more and more difficult to actually present your case and explain why decentralized policy is better for everyone. And not only is it uh, an issue where the term states' rights uh, causes concerns in discussing things like this, uh, the term states' rights in and of itself is incorrect. States do not have rights. People have rights. You have rights. I have rights. Individuals have rights. States only have powers, and they only have the powers that we, the people, delegate to them. So really, to sum it up, uh, when looking at the Constitution, in order to find authority, we have to look to the exact words of the Constitution and on top of it see if there's something that's necessary and proper, directly applicable, needed to carrying out one of those listed powers. In regards to gay marriage, it's pretty clear the federal government should not be involved in the issue at all. And that's all I have uh, on this uh, particular discussion. I hope you've enjoyed these few minutes with here, me here today. And I look forward to hearing from more and more of you over at 10thamendmentcenter.com in the near future. I'll be uh, back hopefully next week.